I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com, and today I'm joined with a special guest. This is London from Particle Goods. London's a soy candle making expert, and I'm so excited you're here to collaborate with us. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I am also excited to be here, and I've been making candles for three or so years. I started in my kitchen using the same techniques we're going to talk about today, and now I make things in huge batches, and I send them to stores all over the country. That's awesome. So you wholesale a lot. So I tell do. us tell us what we're going to be making today. Yeah, so we're going to be making this really colorful, yummy smelling berry candle set, and it's using our soy 464 soy wax flakes the new dye chips from brambleberry.com in the blackberry and blush pink. And then we also topped it with a little bit of our eco rainbow glitter as well. Really? That, well, first of all, the eco rainbow glitter looks amazing when it's melting. It does. Tell me a little bit about your testing process. Oh, yes. So I feel like you have to test everything once, twice, maybe even a couple times. And all of the things we're going to talk about today should be tested independently. So choosing a container is its own process. You want to think about, um, you know, how, something that's heat safe definitely has to hold up to a high temperature. So glass is a great container. Metal, ceramic, also really suitable. I would stay away from plastic. That's a really... <laughs> right, no Tupperware. Yeah, yeah no Tupperware uh, that's going to melt or catch fire. Yeah. Just not a great situation. And then and for the wicks, we actually did the testing for everyone, so you don't have to test the wicks for this project, but it is something you want to test, making sure that you choose a wick that's appropriate for your container so that it'll reach a full wax melt pool. And you'll notice in this candle, we're slowly watching that melt pool get wider and wider, and by the end, it should reach all sides of that container. So I look for a wick that reaches a full melt pool at a rate of about one hour per inch in diameter. Okay. So three inch container should reach a full melt pool in about three hours. Great. So this is melting really well. It's beautiful. What would happen if I chose a wick that was too big for my candle? Yeah, if you choose a wick that's too large, it can actually be kind of dangerous because your container can get too hot. Mm -hmm. The flame can get really large. It'll smoke a lot. It might start to soot a little bit. So you want to make sure that you have a flame that's big enough to consume the fuel, but not so big that you pose a potential hazard. And so testing without fragrance and without color to get the right wick size is pretty important. It is, yeah. Okay. So I would say start by picking your container, then choose your wick, and then choose your fragrance after that. That makes a lot of sense. So. What's our first step to making these candles? Yeah, so our first step is gonna to be to melt our wax. Now, okay. we're gonna use the double boiler method today. You've got one over there, I've got one over here, and this is a really great method because you should have everything you need to do this at home. So you don't need special tools or special skills. You're just gonna be using two pots nested together with a little bit of simmering water. That's great, can I melt this in the microwave? You could, yeah, you could melt it in the microwave. It's gonna be a little harder to regulate the temperature and make sure that you don't so burn the wax. great idea. Yeah, it's, I would say it's a last resort. If that's the only way that you have, you could certainly try it, do it in really short bursts. But I would say this is a really easy method and you should have everything you need. So okay. probably a better one. So mine's at a low kind of simmer and I can see that I've got a really big wax chunk in the middle. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about our setup. So we're using a pot with a Pyrex container. Our wax is already measured out, so it's starting to melt already. Because you've got some chunks in there, I would say give it, give it a good stir and kind of break up some of those wax chunks. That's just in the nature of soy wax. It tends to clump as it melts. And I've got a pretty good boil going. You have less of a boil. What happens if this gets too hot? Yeah, if it gets too hot, like if the wax gets above 200 degrees, it's gonna start to yellow and discolor. So you don't wanna oh. get it that hot. No. Keep it at a low simmer. You're, you're about right. The water is lightly bubbling, but it's not splashing out or at risk of getting into your container. And what is my ideal kind of temperature for pouring and how serious do I have to be about keeping it? Yeah, so the first temperature we're looking for is the temperature we wanna add the fragrance at. So we're looking to bring the wax up to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. And that just allows the wax to fully expand all of the molecules so it can help incorporate the fragrance. Oh, sure. Once we add the fragrance, we'll pour at a different temperature. And that's also gonna be determined by testing and manufacturer recommendation, but our temperature today will be 150 degrees. And speaking of flashpoints and fragrances, the fragrance you chose is the Brambleberry fragrance, yeah. which I love in soap. So I'm very excited to use it. This mm, it's amazing in candles. Bergamot, yeah. is it? Mm, I love the peony and the mm, so many nice berry notes. Mm, and it's kind of juicy too. Totally, yeah. yes. And so one of the things I've always heard about candles is that you have to worry about flashing off or kind of evaporation or scent evaporation. So Absolutely. is that one of the reasons we're gonna try pouring at like 150 or? 
Yeah, so the flash point is the temperature you should add your, fla your fragrance to the wax. So this has a really high flash point of 190 degrees Fahrenheit, which means if we're adding it, we're planning to add it around 185, that's fine. We're not at any risk of, you know, evaporating or burning off. And the nice thing is we don't have to worry about adding it at a lower temperature. So this is going to be a really easy fragrance to work with. Fantastic. I'm excited. And talk to me a little bit about kind of fragrance load and how much you want to do as a general rule of thumb, how much we're doing for this. Sure. I mean, fragrance, I think, is somewhat personal. Like, I might like a stronger candle than you. I personally tend to stick to like 6 to 8% usage rate, even though the wax can hold upwards of 10 to 12%. So oh, okay. you have a pretty wide range to work with, but I found that if you're using really high quality oils, like Bramble Berries oils, then you don't need to use that full percentage to get a really highly fragrant candle. Sure, and then you kind of are just wasting money if you're yeah. adding too much. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if you start at the top and try to work your way down, it's gonna be harder versus if you start at six or 8%, it's a little easier to know, do I have enough? And you can add more without wasting it. That makes a lot of sense. So now we, you're fully melted, I'm almost melted. So what next? Yeah, I think we should go ahead and add our dye chips. So if you wanna add the blush pink to yours okay. and I'll add the blackberry, um, I like to let them melt together. So you can see it, make sure it gets fully incorporated. And how, I mean like, how do, is it what you see is what you get? Like, how do I choose it's how It's gonna much look a use? lot darker, yeah. So the blush pink will look significantly darker than it will in the finished candle. And the okay. bl blackberry purple, actually, once I add that in there and it's fully mixed, it almost looks black. So it's gonna cool down to a really beautiful kind of plum berry purple, but it'll look very deceiving while it's Well, because it's clear versus yeah. opaque. Sure, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. And you can always add more, so that's a good thing to keep Which in mind too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I added a little bit more of the dye chips. I just wanted a really saturated color. So the darker it gets, the harder it's going to be to ensure that it's fully mixed. But you want to look for little chunks or streaks on the side of your container just to make sure that that dye gets fully incorporated. And if it doesn't get fully incorporated, this is color in wax. So it's not the worst thing ever. You just yeah. end up with a darker spot in your candle. You'll have a fun Betty candle. Fun Betty <laughs> candle. Unintended. Yeah. So I'm going to take the temperature of my wax here just to see where we're at. It's clearly melted, but that doesn't mean that it's ready for fragrance. Right. You're at so, like 140-ish? Yeah. yeah. So we've still got a little ways to go. And I would say if you want to add your wax chips, you're looking all melted over yeah, there. So I'm at like 138-ish. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So let me pull this out to add the wax chips. So that way we can kind of decide what the perfect ideal color yeah, you is. Yeah, see that perfect hue. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna use blush pink and I know this one's pretty powerful. So start with maybe like half of this, you think? Sure, yeah, you can always okay. add more. Good point. So there it goes in and I'll just give it a quick stir and let the heat of the wax start to melt it. Ooh, I can see it starting to melt. I love it when it makes those cool spirals. Ooh. And it's interesting because it looks like it's going to be more of an orange red, but when it kind of cures out yeah, or hardens. Yeah, it does have kind of a coral tone to it, mm -hmm. but it's really pink when it When, when it cools. actually yeah. is cool. That is the whole thing where we're working with this in a transparency, and it's going to be opaque when it hardens up. I really love it when the wisps start coming from the color. It's kind of dorky, but they're No, so I do pretty. too, yeah. Okay, so now I'm kind of like, this looks a little light to me. What do you think? I would do just a touch more, okay, but so that's about what it looked like for me. Okay, well, yeah. you know what? I could test a little bit just on the white table here. Yeah, that's a great idea. You know, so, and so like if you had wax paper at home or a paper towel even, you could do that. Yeah, just take and a little spoon and... And I don't have to worry about it since this is a white table and I'll be able to use like a credit card or whatever to scrape it off. But if I had a wood table, super bad idea. Yeah, I mean, yeah. soy wax is water soluble, so it's easy to clean with so soap and water, but a porous mm -hmm. surface like wood is gonna absorb some of that. So I would say putting down some wax paper or right. paper towels is a little easier. Okay, and as it gets a little bit oh, yeah. harder and cooler, I can see that pink color is really shining through and it's really pretty. I think I feel good about this color. What do you think? Yeah. Oh yeah, that looks really nice. Okay, I feel good about it. So now I, we wanted the fragrance to go in at about 150, right? 185. 185, my goodness, I really need your help here. Okay, <laughs> so great. I'm at 151, so I'm gonna pop this back in yeah, to get it just a little bit warmer. Exactly, there's no fragrance in there, so it's fine if you need to put it back on the heat, and then mm -hmm. you just wanna wait until you get to that 185. But in the meantime, we could weigh out our fragrance. 
Oh, waiting. that's a good idea. Yeah. And the 185 is really important, so that way our wax fully kind of incorporates the fragrance into exactly. all of its molecules. Yeah, and what's okay. happening is the fragrance isn't dissolving in the wax, but it's sort of being encapsulated by the wax. So it's just a way to make sure that it can really bond together. And that you have even throw then also. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. If it's too low when you add the fragrance, you might have pockets where you get some fragrance oil that didn't mix all the way, and then you'll have really strong throw in part of your candle and really weak throw in the other part. Not good. Yeah. And so 8% usage is going to be about 0.8 mm. ounces. So yummy smelling 0.8 ounces. And we're going with weight so we can have an even consistent batch every single time. Absolutely. And because fragrances have different densities, right? Right. And candle making is a science as well as an art. So we're still waiting for these to get to the perfect temperature. Yeah. Let's go ahead and prep these. So talk to me about the prepping process. Yeah, so we're using our frosted glass containers, and then these are the HTP cotton wicks. This is a 93. Oh. So the 72 also worked in this size, so you could test for either, just depending on what fragrance you're using, but we're going to use the 93. And when you say cotton core, it's got like a hard cotton core yeah, in the middle. Yeah, so you can see those fibers it. are kind of braided together, mm -hmm. so it's giving you a nice like rigidity, it's and then beautiful. that cotton will create a really nice, strong flame. And then put it in the bottom, right? Yeah, so I like to use these wick stickers. These are just a low profile wick sticker and they work really well, especially if you're pouring at a hotter temperature. Okay. So these work a little bit better than something like a glue gun, for example. Which is what I use at home. Thank you very much. Yes, you do. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what we learned, right? Hot glue guns go with all crafts. Uh, yes. But as it turns out, hot glue melts at Hot no. temperatures. I know, crazy. So that's probably also going to melt and it's going to be moving around Eventually, in your candle. Sure. Yeah, so these work really well. They hold up to a really hot temperature and then you can just press them down firmly. And floop. Yeah. The whole thing goes over. Yeah, exactly. Kay. So we need something to stabilize that wick Kay. too, right? Yes. So what would you suggest? Well, if what I'm at home, at home yeah. I use pencils. Pencils? Okay. Thank you yeah. very much. I mean, pencils can work. Yeah. Also, these popsicle sticks you have yes. would work. And Done. if you have a clothespin, this is something that I use even as a professional candle maker. Clothespins are awesome. You can slide it through the eye oh. and then pull that around and clip it. And I like this because it gives you a nice, like, taut tension with the wick. So it's not going to move around and it's going to hold it really that perfectly is a centered. Great tip. And yeah. while you're doing that, I'm going to take a really quick temperature check because I don't want us to get too hot and then have to wait for this to cool down, right? That's a great idea. And yeah, honestly, we're like 181 ish here. So you're really close. Yeah, so yeah. let's, I'm gonna turn the heat off. And why don't you tell me a little bit more about what else we have here? And then let's get ready to fragrance and okay. pour. That sounds great. So this is another great wick tool that you can use. It's called a bow tie wick clip. So this is made for several different diameters of container. And I really like using these because. It has a notch in the center that you can slide that wick in and it'll just oh. lock it in place. Oh. It's also great if you're using a container where you need to use a double wick. So it'll space those for you, which can be kind of tricky to do with a popsicle stick method where you're trying to keep them upright and centered mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I actually haven't done a lot of playing with this. So I can see where there's a lot of value in having that little notch. That's very cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and fragrance. Perfect. All right, are you ready to add fragrance? I'm ready. We're okay. at the perfect temperature. Fragrance is still smelling great. And do, does it matter how fast or how slow? I you would pour go. It? You can you can pour it in however fast you want, and then just stir slow and steady. Okay. Yeah. If you and stir too quickly, you might add a little extra air, oh, and that can I cause like that. a no. sinkhole or something like that. So you're gonna stir continuously for about a minute. Oh, okay. So yeah. there's no visual cue that this is mixed in. No. Okay. Yeah. So, patience. And if I don't mix it in fully, what happens? If you don't mix it in fully, like we talked about, you may get pockets in your candle that have a stronger or weaker fragrance throw, but it could also just leach out because it wasn't stirred. So you'd get like fragrance at the top cooling. Yeah, it's like beading at the top. Oh, it's kind of unattractive. Yeah, yeah it's, mm -hmm. not, it's not the kind of candle not we great. want to burn. No. Yeah. We're going for luxury candles. Luxury, which is what you make. Your candles are so beautiful. Thank you. you know, we found you at this really great little store in Seattle, and we love kind of the aesthetic and the look and the feel of your candles, and that's why we reached out. Aww. Yeah, love your stuff. Well, this has been a really fun project because I had not worked with colored dyes before. My candles are white and yes, simple. Very minimalist. Yeah, kind of. exactly. Yeah. But this was really fun because I got to get really creative and play with colors and glitter and all kinds of things that I don't normally use. So. Right. And, well, and I love the project you came up with. Yeah, stepping outside our comfort zone. It's a good thing.
All right, so now we can let our wax cool. And remember, we're gonna pour around 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that's a little bit higher than Golden uh, 464 normally recommends. For most projects, you'll pour at about 135 with the highest of that range being 155. So we're on the okay. high end, but that's simply because I found that with the uh, dyes in there, if I pour too low, it tends to frost and you get those ugly kind of oh. like crystals and snowflake looking textures at the top. So this just helps ensure we get a really smooth top and that we don't have any frosting. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah. we're both around like 165, so we have to wait. And I know with melt and pour soap, when I'm making melt and pour, if I have to wait like this, I have to cover it or keep stirring. Do we have to worry about like a skin developing? No, no, no. So you can, great. yeah, you can just wait. You can keep a thermometer in there if you wanna keep checking the mm -hmm. temperature. Um, because we're so close, I wouldn't like leave the room and walk away. I would stay pretty close and tend to it. Until okay, it so just, that. we're looking literally for a couple minutes yes, max. Oh, exactly. okay. So it drops pretty fast in temperature. Perfect temperature or yeah. ish. So I am ready to pour. What about you? I'm ready as well. You know, I feel like if we try to pour together, <laughs> we might have some spillage. Why Maybe don't you we'll go, go one at a time. I'll watch the expert. Oh, you're gonna Here watch it? Go. Okay, all right, no, no pressure. pressure. Yeah. So again, pouring slow and steady. That looks so I'm pretty as it really fills. hard not to make a mess as I normally do. And I'm just pouring to the shoulder of that container. Oh, so you okay. don't need to pour all the way to the top. Nice core strength. I see you really reaching over there. I work out. <laughs> it's a beautiful color and it Isn't smells it so good. Perfect. Okay, so I pulled the kind of popsicle sticks out so I could really see how far yeah. I was pouring and I noticed my wick pour. is right. And that's my okay, you're still... gonna stabilize it as soon as you're done. Yeah. Okay, so that's to the shoulder. Mm -hmm. I see that there's not a lot of air bubbles, so I'm feeling good about that. Yeah, feeling that good about great. my technique. And I'm gonna move, put those popsicle sticks back into place. All right, and now, <laughs> now I'm gonna really try hard to pour into this. Here, let's slide this one to the center. Perfect. Teamwork makes the dream work. I've, I've heard a rumor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard that heating up your glass containers can help the like modeling and that kind of stuff. Have you ever tried that? Have you heard that rumor? Yeah, it can. I I feel like it's a lot of time that mm -hmm. I don't want to spend, especially because I make things in really large batches that right. I would have to be preheating containers over and over all day long. So I have so found to just like testing and finding the yeah perfect finding the perfect temperature and also just knowing better. that like handmade isn't perfect and that's right. what makes it really special. That so, makes sense. Yeah. So. The last touch on this, I see that you did some eco glitter. I did, yeah. It's really pretty, it's very sparkly, and I kind of grew up in the days when glitter was made out of plastic and you weren't supposed to burn it. Craft so, store glitter, yes, yeah. So yeah. tell me a little bit more about this. Yeah, so this is an eco glitter made of glucose, so this is not something... Sugar. Sugar, yeah, cool. exactly. So it's not something you have to worry oh, about careful, burning, babe. like plastic, um, but I would still use it sparingly. Just, and, there's some thought that it could also clog the wick if you use too much and... Yeah, absolutely. So I think, again, starting with a small amount, like just a small sprinkling is good. If you look at the candle that we're burning, you can see most of the glitter is kind of like avoiding mm -hmm. the flame, right? It's just it's sitting on the surface the of the wax. Yeah, so I think as that candle burns down, you're just gonna see that glitter kind of sitting on the surface of the wax and you may end up with a little residue, but it doesn't seem like it's posing a fire hazard or interfering with the burn. Right. Yeah. It's really pretty and I love how it catches the light, especially when it's in the kind of wet wax pool. Yeah, I think it just add, it can elevate the candle a little bit. And it's probably sitting on the surface because this eco glitter is so fine. It's, it's lighter yeah, than the actual viscosity very of the fine wax. eco glitter. And I mean, you could try this with something like mica as well and see how that works. That's also a really fine consistency. Mm -hmm. You want to be careful not to add it too soon. So where we've just poured these candles, if we were to add the glitter now, you're probably going to end up with something like this where it just kind of clumps together and it doesn't look beautiful and spread out and sparkly across the surface. It's just like a clump of glitter over here and then oh. nothing. Or so if we added it like right now. Yeah, so it's too hot. When so is the ideal wait. time to add it? You want to wait until the top of your surface looks opaque, like it's okay. started to kind of film over. So it's not fully set, but about an hour, hour and a half after you've poured is probably right. about the right time. And this is totally optional. So if you were making these candles yeah. and you're like, eh, glitter, don't really care about, we'd actually just be done right now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So 
We let these harden and I notice that this one, uh, it's got like a little kind of divot situation going on. Do I care? Is it what? Like, <laughs> yeah. Do I care? So this is called a crater. Um, it could become a sinkhole, which is where you light the candle and some of that wax creates a cavity or a pocket. Okay. And that is potentially going to interfere with your wax melt pool. So it can be a problem when you're burning your candle. So there are a couple ways you could fix it. Okay. You could take a heat gun and sort of like reheat Smooth the top it of it. Yeah, my trick, which I think is a little faster, is just to save if you have any leftover wax, you could also just top it off. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna kind of top off with the extra wax that I have, and we'll fill that in. That makes a lot of sense. Do you want me to do this kind of situation? Yeah, so exactly, just kind of oh, like so fill pretty. That in. Yeah, that's perfect. So super easy, and then yeah. you don't have to mess with it, um, and you'll have enough wax that it'll melt underneath. Such a good tip. Thank you. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and add glitter to yours while we wait for mine to harden. Then perfect. So I'm going to use this to help a little disperse. Kind of tea strainer thing. Yeah, just so I don't get glitter everywhere, which you know I may do anyway. You know. Glitter is hard to deal with sometimes. Like, and this, this eco glitter is so fine. It's really it fine, yeah. Everywhere. So I'm just gonna barely tap it, kind of going around the side of the wick, trying right. not to. That. Trying not to just stick yeah. directly on the wick. I mean, this you know. This also fire. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhat unavoidable, but like, you can just kind of add until you feel happy. I feel happy just looking at it. <laughs> It's so pretty. This would make such a great gift, don't you think? Absolutely. Such a great gift. Also, super easy to make, to sell. Lots yeah. of really different great options. Really fun activity to do with friends. You all can come over and put different things on the top to make it fun and sparkle. Love it. Yeah. So now that this top is mostly set up, I'm going to do my glitter. And I watched you very carefully sprinkle right around the wick and no not... Pressure. I know, no pressure. I am a little terrified that I'm going to get it all over the place. Gosh, it's so pretty. This is very satisfying. Right? Yeah. Very satisfying. Talk about sparking joy. Sparking <laughs> Does it spark joy? <laughs> Thank you. Oh yeah, that looks great. So you can tell this was at the perfect time because it's sticking, but it's not clumping together and it's not sinking into the wax. It is beautiful. So now do I have to let this sit for at all? Like cold process soap, there's cure time. What do I do with this? Yeah. So you always want to make sure that you leave your candles just like sitting and cooling for at least 24 hours okay. before you take the wick clip off or try to trim the wick. Just like leave it alone, let it be, let it cool. After that, I think it's a matter of testing and preference. So I like to let my candles cool for about three to five days. Okay. I found that that just gives the wax and the fragrance time to fully bond and get really friendly in the candle, so it gives a perfect scent row. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So you can try it and see what works best for you. Again, you may find that you only need to cure it for a couple of days or you want to cure it even longer. Awesome. Okay. Well, this is fantastic. I'm really excited about this project. And thank you so much, London, for coming on set yes. with us today. And thank you so much for creating the project and just lending us some of your creativity and your entrepreneurial joy. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be alerted when we come out with new videos. And when you're posting your stuff to social media, please hashtag it Bramble on so we can all see what you're making. Until next time.